All right, we are now joined by OU head coach Lincoln Riley. A little uncomfortable for Bobby and I as a Longhorn alumna myself and Bobby a Longhorn fan, but I got to tell you, you got to give credit where credit is due. How about the Cowboys organization becoming a bit of, Cal of Sooner South for you? What is it that you're doing with just your recruiting and these guys that's getting them so many looks in the league right now, coach? Oh, it's the efforts of a lot of people. You know, we've got a great setup. Uh, you know, we've been able to recruit some outstanding players. We've got a, a development team kind of all around strength and conditioning, nutrition, football, life outside of football, academics that's that's really pushed these guys. And, and uh, we've been lucky to have some great ones that, that have been coveted by a lot of people. Uh, and then I think the other thing that, that people are – enjoy about our players is they know our guys have played on the biggest stages. You know, they've played in, in major games. They've played in championship games. They've played in playoff games, uh, you know, huge venues, uh, great opponents. So, um, you know, I think that's a big part of it. Uh, and then I also look at, you know, kind of the history of, of Oklahoma players. And, you know, a lot of people want to focus on how many players that you have drafted or opportunities in the NFL. And that's certainly important. I don't want to discount that, but also, of your players that get those opportunities, how many are, you know, like making it, you know, how many are becoming successful. And I think when you study the history of Oklahoma, both, you know, past and, and current, that, that's, that's been a pretty good batting percentage. And uh, so I think our guys are getting some great opportunities. And I think you'll have another class this year that'll be ready to take advantage of those. CeeDee Lamb is obviously one of those and one of these guys that Cowboys fans are most interested in. And I know a lot of people have seen just some of the glowing things you've said about CD during his career and, and some of the positive things. And everybody knows, you know, what a, what a great player he is and his skill set. Uh, but as somebody who has been with him the last few years, what would you say is the thing CD still most needs to work on as he enters the league? What would you say is the area he can sharpen the most now that he's heading to the NFL? Well, he's a versatile player, uh, you know, and I think, I think probably will be just adjusting to some different coverages to some of the just consistently better, uh, you know, DBs that he's going to see week in and week out. I, he's one of those guys, I don't know that there's one just like glaring weakness in his game, which is exciting, but I mean, he's going to need to continue to improve on all parts. Um, I know that's kind of a boring answer, but it's, it's the truth. He, the guy, you know, can, can do it all well, uh, but he's, he's still got a lot of room to grow. And, and I think if you look at his time here from when he came in as a true freshman, uh, to the way he's improved his game, improved his body, his speed. I mean, every part of him has gotten better. And he's and, and the reason for that is he's been a great practice player. He's worked hard. He's allowed us to continue to coach him very, very hard here, which we do, um, even when he's had success. And so I think if he, you know, if he keeps that attitude, which I fully believe that he will and stays hungry, this guy's going to continue to get better and better. And, and I don't see any reason why he can't be one of the elite receivers in that league. Is there something that stands out for you about your time with CeeDee Lamb when you thought to yourself as a head coach, not only is this kid going to make it in the NFL, but this kid's special? You know, I, I, I thought he had a chance to be special from, honestly, the day we started recruiting him. I went out to, to watch him at Foster High School down there in, in, uh, in southwest Houston and watched him do a seven-on-seven seven in between his uh, junior and senior football seasons. And I thought at that point he was good enough to play for us then, which, you know, that's, that's you know, saying something for somebody still that young. And, and I, I just believed in our talks even before he got on campus, even before he signed with us with him, where, you know, if you'll trust us, if you'll continue to improve, if you'll continue to stay humble with the start that you have and the ability you have, this could really be something special. And, and I just give the kid credit. You know, so many people – in this day and age, whether it's in football, uh, any other walk of life, when they have success, they tend to stop wanting to listen to people or wanting to take, you know, criticism or wanting to be pushed. And and this kid kept that. And uh, and I think that's why he's gotten better. It's been fun to see, you know, kind of that journey from the very beginning. And, and uh, you know, I think that's the most exciting thing about him right now, if you're a Cowboys fan, is you got a very talented player that I think is good enough to help you right now. But it's, you know, has always been extremely hungry to get better, and I think that's going to continue. A, a lot of people around the league right now are, are talking about, you know, you, you've got to have exciting passing concepts in the NFL now, you know, and, and they usually mention Sean McVay, you, Joe Brady, and they say, you know, you need to be doing creative things like those guys are doing. The, the running game is not the way you win anymore. I'm just curious from your perspectives, and so many people think so highly of, of what you do with offensive concepts, what role do you think, 
the running game should play in, in, in modern football, both at the collegiate and the NFL level? Oh, I believe a huge part. I mean, I, I think, I think, you know, if you, if you look at us here, I think the lowest we finished in rushing in the, all the years we've been here, I think is maybe like 25th, 26th, 27th, somewhere in there. I mean, we have, we've really committed to it and it's made our passing game stronger. It's certainly helped our quarterbacks. It's, I think it makes you much tougher to defend I've also been in places, too, where, you know, maybe because you didn't have the best old linemen or best running backs or you were overmatched where you had to throw to win. And so I do think certainly you want to get to a point where you can run the football. I mean, it, there's no question about it. But at the end of the day, you have what you have, and you've got to find a way to make that work. You have to find a way to move the ball regardless. So, you know, do you have to have one? No, but certainly having a, a good running game makes everything a hell of a lot easier. Switching over to defense, we had Neville Gallimore on our show uh, just a, a week ago. He's a really impressive kid. And, of course, CeeDee Lamb getting a teammate on this Cowboys roster. What stood out for you about Neville and what can fans expect from him? Neville's such a cool story. You know, I mean, you know, coming from Canada, uh, you know, I've compared it both doing some interviews and even, you know, talking to GMs, uh, coaches, all that leading up to the draft process when – when Neville got here, it was almost like bringing an eighth grader in, in terms of how much exposure he had actually had to football. Uh, he was very raw. He was a smart kid. He always worked hard, but he just, he was so far behind bringing in, you know, the, the, the normal player that we would in terms of just what he knew about the game and how much he had the exposure he had had to it. And so it was a kind of a constant process his first couple of years. He, his, his athleticism always flashed. His effort always flashed. He's always been very strong in the weight room. I mean, he had the, he had the tools, and he had some bright moments those first two years on the field. But then these last two, he he took it to another level. Uh, he was outright dominant. He did it in a brand new defensive system for us this year. Was able to learn that, process it, and and easily have his best year. So. You're getting a quality, quality human being. You're getting a very explosive guy that will leave it all on the field. You're getting a, an interior defensive lineman that can win one-on-one -on -one in, in pass rush situations, which obviously is critical at any level of football. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I think his best football is ahead of him. I, I really do, just kind of where he started and because of the work ethic that this kid has. So he'll become a fan, fra a fan favorite. They'll – Love the way he plays, love the way he communicates, and uh, he's just a neat human being. We became fans of him really quick, didn't we, Bobby? Oh, yeah. No, he was, he was great, and he was, he was a lot of fun. And he took in good nature the Texas shirt I forgot that I had on when we started the interview. <laughs> but, uh, Bob, Bobby's kind of like Charlie Brown. There's only a couple of outfits he exactly. wears during the week, and it just so happens that he's got two Longhorn sweatshirts. And we had Tony Casillas on yesterday. He, of course, was wearing it. So he's not trolling OU. It's just he's like Charlie Brown. He only has so many shirts that he wears to work. Well, luckily for Bobby, we timed it out better today. <laughs> there, there you go. You get the gray today. Now, now we are, even though we are Cowboys focused, we do get a lot of uh, Eagles listeners just from the fact that, you know, they're, they're checking in on the division rival. And I know one of the, uh, I think really, you know, kind of unfortunate because I, I know from talking to people what a good guy he is. Some of the unfortunate reactions is some of the hate that streamed down on social media for the Jalen Hurts pick. And I know that you know what kind of a player he can be. For anybody listening who may be an Eagles fan, why should they not be upset about Jalen Hurts going to Philadelphia? Oh, man, there's, there's a lot of reasons. Um, you know, for I, I know the bad blood between that rivalry, but those, uh, the brain trust there in Philadelphia the last few years has got a, uh, a, a Lombardi trophy and a lot of wins, a lot of success. Those guys know what they're doing, and they were very, very thorough in their evaluation of, of Jalen and – They've got a plan. You know, they've got one of the best offensive coaches in football and, and Doug Peterson. They've got a great GM. They, they, they know what they're doing. And uh, I, that position obviously is so critical in that league. And then to have a guy like Jalen that you can come in, that can develop, that can already do so many things day one, that's an unbelievable presence in the locker room, which I, you know, people talk about that, but I don't know that everybody really understands how important that that is. And, and Jalen just got that vibe about him. He's just a winner, and uh, he's going to make people around him better. So it'll be fun to see how they use him. I, I think it I think it makes it all the sense in the world. I mean, you just, you know, you, you think about all the money, time, effort, all invested into NFL seasons. And then, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're, 
the one snap happens and your main quarterback goes down and you've got no answer after that. I mean, you know, you're one snap away always. And, and so uh, I, I love the pick. I love the fit for Jalen. I know they're very excited to get him. And I, I think the Philadelphia fans, as they get to know him, see what kind of worker he is, see how he performs on Sundays, I, I think they'll love him as well. You know, I've covered the Cowboys on and off since 2004, and so I've gotten to listen to a lot of Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones over the year. And when I hear you just talk football, the importance of the running back, that backup quarterback position, and even the way that you just go down some of the uh, memory lane on your players and the way you speak of them, I think that if you got in a room with Stephen or Jerry, I could see how you might enamor them a bit. So the biggest question for a lot of Cowboys fans, how interested were they in you as the head coach? Oh, you know, I, I stay away from those things. You know, that's uh, those, those are a lightning rod, as, as you guys know, as much as anybody. Um, you know, listen, they're one of the elite organizations. They're, they do a absolutely tremendous job. You know, it's it's been uh, it's been fun. You know, getting to be here close to them and be around them a little bit. But uh, I've I'm also lucky that you know I've probably got the best college job in America and a place that we're very happy. So you know, I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, I also wanted to ask you about DeMarco Murray. You know, you talked about the emphasis on the running game. What's having a guy like DeMarco Murray like in your building? Obviously a very proud Sooner. I got to think it helps with recruiting, but also to have his skill set in there working with some of your young guys. Yeah, it's been awesome. You know, uh, he, he's just, uh, as you know, he's, a, he's just a really neat individual. You know, he's done so much already in his life at such a young age and uh, obviously has kind of been tremendous at everything he's done. He's, He's been very, uh, you know, very impactful with our current players. Just to have a guy that that has kind of led that life that a lot of these guys would love to emulate. He obviously, you know, being able to do it at Oklahoma and, and relate so much back to our guys. But then also, he's he's, he's pretty wise beyond his years. You know, you can tell the guy, like 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 a lot of players think they can just leave the field and immediately coach, and they think they, they've well, I've been a player, I've been in it, I've seen it all. And a lot of guys get in it, and you could tell when they were as a player, like they, they had blinders on. They had no idea a lot of things were going on around him. And DeMarco, as you visit with him, you can tell this guy always paid attention. He was always learning, very aware of what was happening. And, and so he's progressed just like he did as an announcer he, and just like he did as a player. He's progressed very quickly as a coach and has a great knowledge, great understanding uh, of what we want to do. He's going to be a tremendous recruiter. So he was, a, he was a great hire. We're thrilled to have him. Well, you've helped make Texas OU great again. And like I said, I know that you are in, incredibly busy. You guys are dealing with the uncertainty of a football season, as so many are. I know here in, uh, at the NFL Network, we talked about it last night. We are expecting the season to go f- uh, full board. But, you know, we, we sort of prepare ourselves, as anyone does, for – you know, catastrophic events, whether that be a hurricane, uh, tornado damage, you name it. So that's kind of how we're looking at the season. So I hope to see you guys on the field. And again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Maybe we'll talk to you again next year when you get a couple of other guys that come to Dallas. That sounds great. Thanks for having me on. You guys stay safe.